behind every genomic data scientist is a data scientist. If you love Python like I do, today we're going to explore the fundamental Python libraries you have to know if you want to be a data analyst. Welcome back to my channel. This is Genomics with Georgia. I share content all about how to learn the skills you need to enter into a career in genomic data science. Every scientist working with biological data needs to understand how to work with data full stop, no matter the data type we're talking about in terms of that biological data. Today's video, we're gonna explore the fundamental libraries in Python that you need in order to go into data analytics and then obviously apply those skills in a scientific environment. There are thousands and thousands of analytical tools available to you, open source, free on the internet to use and apply to your data. But today we're gonna to focus on the fundamental libraries that you must know if you want to work in this field. In a later video, I'm going to explore the specific genomic Python libraries that are really helpful. But for today, we're just gonna start with the fundamental Python libraries you have to learn. So first things first, you know a bit of basic Python, you've done an intro course, now we need to learn the good libraries that are relevant for working with data. So first of all, you need to remember that you have to install these. So make sure that you head on over to your terminal, it doesn't matter what operating system you're in, and you wanna make sure you have pip installed, um, and you can do a pip install command to install these libraries onto your machine, and you can then import them in Python once you've installed them on your machine. Definitely check out Anaconda. It's a package that has lots of data analysis libraries. Very helpful to know, but you can just install the ones I'm mentioning as you go along as you need. The first library that you have to know is pandas. And we're not talking about the animal, a panda. We're talking about the pandas Python library. Pandas is the foundation library of any data analysis work. I use it every day in the work that I do, even though I'm working with genomic data. We perform a lot of operations within Pandas. It's crucial to know. Pandas is a fantastic library for working with data in a tabular kind of format. You can import data from so many different file types such as CSVs, comma separated values, Excels, JSONs, even SQL um, query files, pickle files, HTML. There's so many files you can import into Pandas. And then once you have your data, into pandas, you can start to work with it. Pandas is essential for some of the preliminary steps we need in data analysis, such as data wrangling, manipulation, cleaning. It's essential to clean your data. Merging different data sets. We might have some genomic data and some metadata, and we can merge them together. It's good for reordering, sorting your data. Pandas also has lots of time series functionality, enabling you to work with dates. And it also allows you to perform quick data visualizations to quickly see basic trends in your data in a graph format. Pandas is the go-to first library to use as soon as you've got your data ready. So definitely learn Pandas, check it out, it's essential. And I'm going to definitely talk more about all the awesome things you can do in Pandas to your data. The second fundamental library you have to know is NumPy. This stands for Numerical Python and it's the foundation of any numerical analysis that we want to do within our Python code. NumPy converts objects into NumPy arrays, and it calls these ND arrays. And these are then data structures that have the same data type, and it makes analysis so much easier because sometimes in Pandas, there's no rules about what can be in your certain columns and rows, and it can get very stressful when you've got lots of missing or wrong data. So NumPy is really fantastic for those numerical calculations you want to do. NumPy allows you to reshape your data, convert it from a single dimension to a multi-dimensional array. It's fantastic for working with multi-dimensional data. We can broadcast functions to our arrays. We can do basic calculations, so basic statistics on them. And it's essentially the foundational library for some other really great fun libraries too. So if you master NumPy, then that will set you up fantastically to work with a lot of other scientific libraries in Python. The third fundamental library you must learn is Matplotlib. Matplotlib, as it insinuates, is for plotting your data. So Matplotlib is one of many plotting libraries that we have in Python. Another few such as Plotly, Seaborn, Bocker, also exist. But if you learn Matplotlib first, 
then that sets you up very well to then use the other libraries that are kind of based off the way that Matplotlib works anyway. So once you've kind of used pandas to wrangle your data, you use NumPy if you needed to do some calculations and rearranging on numerical data. Once you've done all of your wrangling, cleaning calculations, you want to plot this data to actually see what's going on in your data. So Matplotlib allows you to convert your data types, your objects into a graph. And this is great because we can do things like see trends, look at relationships. We can look at the distribution of our data and this can then allow us to do you know, more calculations or just to describe the data that we're working with. You can do things like identify the outliers, look deeply into those relationships and see what's going on in your data. The basic functionality in Matplotlib is very easy to pick up and you can create some graphs very easily. But also Matplotlib is very, very customizable. You can end up doing some really complex graphing in Matplotlib, but it's really quite easy to learn the fundamentals of plotting your first line graph and plotting your first bar chart. Definitely make sure that you know how to convert data into graphs via Matplotlib, and then that'll set you up well for your data visualization journey. The fourth fundamental library is Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn basically has nearly every machine learning algorithm that you would ever want in a single library. Their website is fantastic. It has loads of use cases and examples of all the many things you can do with Scikit-Learn. And I think the documentation is also a great way to teach yourself those machine learning concepts if you're not familiar with them already. Things you can do in scikit-learn um, include things like clustering, dimensionality reduction, linear regression, classification and data transformation. So there's many, many things we can do in scikit-learn and I must say there is a lot in there so don't get overwhelmed by all that is in scikit-learn. I would say start maybe having a go with something that you are familiar with or something that's related to your field. So for example, often in biology, we're doing PCA analysis, PCA documentation. I think that's really easy to kind of follow along, try out yourself, look at the code that they put up online and then see if you can get that to work for yourself. And then finally, the fifth tool that you have to understand how to use if you want to work in data analysis is working with Jupyter. So Jupyter notebooks are the way that data analysts predominantly work. We don't usually day to day write Python scripts and then run them to produce a result. What we're doing is going step by step through our data, working through it, seeing what we need to do, seeing what's in there, getting some results, going back, doing some more things. It's a very involved process. We want outputs constantly so we can alter what we're doing to work and manipulate and analyze our data. Jupyter Notebooks provide a fantastic platform in order to do this. So if you've started your coding journey using IDEs like PyCharm or Visual Studio, make sure that for data analysis, you're working inside a Jupyter Notebook. Fantastic. So guys, that was your five essential libraries and tools that you have to know to work in data analysis. We all want to go into bioinformatics, computational biology, dealing with all of this biology data. But before you rush into trying to analyze actual complex genetic data, you must learn the fundamental Python libraries first. We've got pandas, numpy, matplotlib and scikit-learn and make sure you work in a Jupyter notebook. That's it for today. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to pop in the comments if there's anything else you're interested in, you want to learn about. And I'll be following this up with another video about specific genomic libraries in Python that are great for data analysis. I've been Georgia. This is Genomics with Georgia and catch me on another video.